Next is uh, Ms. Rodas, who's recognized for five minutes. Good afternoon, Chairman McClintock, Ranking Member Japal, and distinguished members of the committee. It is an honor to be here. I thank you for the invitation to share my testimony. My goal is to inspire action to safeguard the lives of migrant children, including the staggering 85,000 that are missing. Today, children will work overnight shifts at slaughterhouses, factories, restaurants to pay their debts to smugglers and traffickers. Today, children will be sold for sex. Today, children will call a hotline to report they are being abused, neglected, and trafficked, and we don't know if they're going to get the help they need. For nearly a decade, unaccompanied children have been suffering in the shadows, and I have to confess I knew nothing about their suffering until 2021 when I volunteered to help the Biden administration with the crisis at the southern border. As part of Operation Artemis, I was deployed to the Pomona Fairplex Emergency Intake Site in California to help HHS, Office of Refugee Resettlement, reunite children with sponsors in the United States. I thought I was going to help place children in loving homes. Instead, I discovered that children are being trafficked through a sophisticated network that begins with recruiting in home country, smuggling to the U.S. border, and ends when ORR delivers a child to a sponsor some sponsors are criminals and traffickers and members of transnational criminal organizations. Some sponsors view children as commodities and assets to be used for earning income. This is why we are witnessing an explosion of labor trafficking. Now, whether it's intentional or not, it could be argued that the United States government has become the middleman in a large scale, multi-billion dollar child trafficking operation that is run by bad actors seeking to profit off of the lives of children. As for me, my interest is the safety of the children. I do not view this as a political issue. I view this as a humanitarian issue. I assure you, my motives are the highest and best. I want the children protected. So I want to tell you some of what I witnessed personally at the Pomona Fairplex. I saw vulnerable indigenous children from Guatemala who speak Mayan dialects and cannot speak Spanish. That means they cannot ask for help in English. They cannot help for, ask for help in Spanish. They become captives of their sponsors. I have sat with case managers as they've cried to tell me the horror of what has happened to children as they make the journey to this country. I saw apartment buildings where 20, 30, and 40 unaccompanied minors have been released. I saw sponsors trying to simultaneously sponsor children from multiple ORR sites at one time. I saw sponsors using multiple addresses to obtain, obtain sponsorships of children. And I saw numerous cases of children in debt bondage, and the child knew they had to stay with the sponsor until the debt was paid. Realizing that we were not offering the children the American dream, but instead putting them in modern day slavery with wicked overlords, was a terrible revelation, a terrible revelation. These children are a captive victim population with no access to law enforcement or knowledge of their rights. They are extorted, abused, neglected. And that is why I blew the whistle in 2021. I witnessed firsthand the horrors of child trafficking and exploitation. My life will never be the same after what I saw. But I have hope because I'm counting on you it's my hope that you'll take action to end this crisis, to safeguard the lives of, most of these vulnerable children. People have asked me, you know, what can be done? What would you suggest? Well, first, I think HHS's number one priority is oversight. They must commit to oversight, transparency, and accountability. If I could wave a magic wand, this, I believe, could be quickly solved by experts in the IG community. There is a pandemic analytics center of excellence, or the PACE, as we call it. I believe if data analysts at the PACE could look at the data, children could be rescued, criminals could be prosecuted. If the PACE had access to this data, it shows where the children are and who has them. I think also 
We need to change the culture of speed over safety. Speed is the wrong performance measure when dealing with children. We need to revamp the vetting process of sponsors and have case managers who have investigative backgrounds, data analytics backgrounds, some certified fraud examiners. And I think we need to reimagine a system where the sponsor is the accountable party. Sponsors should be required to report to ORR. And lastly, stop retaliating against whistleblowers. Stop retaliating against the people who are trying to tell the truth to save the children. As it is written, a wise man listens to advice while a fool continues in his folly, and HHS needs to be wise to care for these children. Thank, thank you very much. Your, your time has expired.